Greg Martin is the managing director at Canada's leading MA firm, Origin Merchant Partners. He is also the host of the Lifetime at Work podcast. Welcome to the show, Greg. Thanks for having me, George. Yeah, excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, a little bit more about your work, and why you do what you do. Yeah, so starting off, I'm Canadian. I've always been living in the suburbs of Toronto where I I was, I was born and now live and, you know, coming out of, of university, I had no idea what the hell I wanted to do. I was in, I had this finance angle. I was always, a, and it was a good student and I had some options, I guess, in terms of what direction I wanted to go to started in, uh, started the world in the world of investment banking. And, uh, it, the, the challenge with that is it's, it, you know, 80, hundred hour weeks are, are not uncommon. And so I said, I do it for two or three years and, uh, I hit the 10 year mark, had a bit of a crisis and uh, and said, OK, what am I doing here? And all in that, I had started a, a business on the side, which um, uh, which sort of, I think, led me into this whole journey around careers and and, you know, why we do them, what we're trying to achieve, what we're trying to get out of them, what they can do for us. And and I think that, you know, some of that advice just around how do you how do you sort of get the most of it? So. Um, so, yeah. So today I host a podcast called Lifetime at Work and um, and I'm still in investment banking. <laughs> That's the real quick of, uh, of me and my background. I appreciate that. Careers are a funny thing. We know that we're going to have one or we assume that we're going to have one. But I don't know. Do you have a sense of what percentage of people are so clear in what they want to do that they actually do it? I, I do think, so I don't know that answer. I have heard a lot of stats, something around, you know, in the, in the call it, you know, 65 to 70% of people are unhappy with their jobs or their career or their, their sort of work today, which I don't love, or it sounds sounds like it's something that could be improved or, and, and, you know, whether that be a mindset thing or a new transition or whatever it is. Uh, and I think, I think part of it is that we just, we well on our jobs quite a bit. They just, they take up so much of our lives. They become a big part of us and our personality. I mean, you asked at the outset, you know, tell me about your, your personal life or <laughs> you very quickly gear yourself into the, into the job and, and that becomes part, a big part of you. And so I think that we just, yeah, we think about it a lot. And it's something that that's where we spend the most time. So I think it is valuable and really, really important to to think about it. And like everything else, I don't I know that I'm guilty of I talk a lot about goal setting. And I had known about the importance of goal setting from about 10 years old, but it took me till about 35 to actually write them down. So just because I know that I'm supposed to be doing something doesn't mean I do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, 100 percent Um and uh and I think we we obviously learn as we get older and realize that, oh my God, this very simple piece of advice that I got so early, actually, <laughs> here is what it actually means. And here's what I should actually have been doing for a long time. Yeah. So how, how, how do you like to break it down? How do you say, okay, somebody says, I just don't know what I should be doing or if this is right for me. I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I, I feel lost. Yeah, I, I would say, so, I mean, Preface, I am by no means a career advisor or any way, you know, I'm not, I'm not a consultant in that regard. I'm just kind of a, an observer, someone who has been fascinated ultimately by this whole concept of work and, and, that, and hence hosts a podcast. And I try to relay and think about a lot of the advice that I give based on my experience and, and where I've come from and, you know, what I've done in the world of work. And so, you know, typically when I, uh, when I talk to people about their jobs and 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 sort of give them advice, a lot of times um, it, it, it takes very different forms. I think at a very you know when, when you're first entering the workforce or when you're early in it, it's just exploratory. Like you're honestly you're just doing stuff to see who you are and what's out there. You don't even really know what jobs that there are. I mean, you, you kind of have to start and just be willing to do some different things and 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 try them out. I think as you get more old, so call that your twenties. As you get you know later into your 30s, I think you are you're refining that. All of a sudden now you have a bunch of skills. You're trying to figure out, hey, is this is this where I am trying to to go? And am I in like kind of the right field more generally? And um, and it's still exploratory, but you've probably you know in, in many in many ways refined it. And within a job, then there are a bunch of facets around you, you know you you enjoying and loving it. And I think the big thing is that you know as people we like to constantly be developing, constantly be getting better 
constantly be working on something. And certain jobs are really good for that, where you know we enter them from right. The, and usually the beginning is the easiest part because we don't know anything; it's brand new. And over time, though, they get harder and harder because we've we've sort of figured out what we need to. We've we've done the easy stuff. We've become acclimatized. We understand the basics of how to get the job going. And then it becomes harder because we we want to keep going and we want to keep getting better at our job and moving up and. And, and and having that impact. And so that's where it starts to get challenging. <laughs> and you start to then have these questions and decisions around, okay, well, you know, maybe my boss isn't super conducive to that. Maybe they want me to just keep doing the same thing. Maybe I have to do something that I don't love to do. Maybe, and then and then it sort of, then you have these questions around, well, you know, is, is this the right job for me? Is this the right position? Do I need to think about something else? And, that, and I think we just constantly iterate with that. We're constantly thinking about, is this the right place? Is this the right position do i want the next one and how do i how do i advance how do i get to the next next spot and i think recognizing that is hard but uh it's kind of maybe step one that makes a lot of sense and when you're in the thick of it it is really hard because you can feel like oh my gosh my boss is just the absolute worst i cannot spend another minute doing this but if you were to take a step back and realize well you're probably always going to have to deal with some coworkers that you're not happy with maybe try to stick this out instead of trying to jump ship. Totally. Yeah. And I think you, you can't, um, I, I think one of the big things and one of the pieces of advice I've been giving people a lot lately around bosses is that you're probably not going to change your boss. So, right. You're not going to, it's hard and, and you're going to fundamentally change who they are, how they treat you They're you know, you're probably stuck with them in many ways. And so you have to decide. Can I work within the parameter? I, my boss is predictable. I know how they're going to react. I know what they're going to do. Whatever, you know. Can I work within these parameters or not? And 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 you know, try to take it from their perspective. Understand what they do. Either you know, can, can they be useful there? And I can I still achieve what I want to achieve or do my job well with them being? And sometimes the answer is no. In which case, you either need to find a new boss within the same company or or find a new company, right? But um, yeah, it's it, it's one of those pieces of advice that I you know I think we we try to change our boss. We try to complain about them a lot thinking that maybe you know think and it's not i i, I you know i think it's really challenging to, to change them for sure <clears throat> so it strikes me that that i'm not going to love everything about my job i'm going to really enjoy some aspects of it that i get to do but then there's things i have to do how do you sort of if there's like a, a pie chart or some kind of a, a, a metric that says if you have four out of the five things you want but the fifth thing is not great <laughs> Is is that okay? Yeah, I mean, you're you're never going to find something fully. I mean, I was a good example as I was an entrepreneur for um, a number of years, and the, the, you have so many damn hats when you're when you're the when you started a business because you've got to do first of all all of, anything wrong that happens with the business is your is on is basically on you. Everyone comes to you with their problems. Um, but in, in addition to that, you're doing HR, you're doing marketing, you're doing strategy and operations, you're you're really involved in legal, you're doing everything in the business, and you're not going to necessarily like like all of those or be with them. And so I think you have to, yeah, you have to on some just sort of say, hey, do I enjoy, do I like getting up in the day, like in the morning and doing like, you know, do the, the good parts of it away, the bad parts of it. And yeah, it's a bit of an art. I mean, you're never going to find the perfect thing. Um, on, honestly, I think you've, you know, you've got to kind of iterate and say, okay, well, what are my... What else, what else is out there? What else could I do? Where else can I take my skills that I have today and translate them to to something else? And so it's it, it's a little bit of that um, to, for, from my perspective. I, I do think that, you know, in some cases we, you know, depending on your state and where you are, you think that you could get any job out there or there's, you know, the world is your oyster. There's, you know, an infinite number of possibilities. In a lot of ways there aren't though. I, I think, you know, as soon as you, well, one, you, you, you know, you gain a certain number of skills and through school or, or, or through, you know, very early days, you get experiences, it's going to allow you to be able to do a certain number, a cer certain number of jobs or a certain type of, type of job after that, but you can't do anything. Um, sometimes it's, <laughs> sometimes it's a lot of work, or sometimes a lot of more schooling you need, or it's more, whatever. And so I think you, you have to be sort of realistic within the skill set that you have, and, and sort of what you're trying to achieve, and then, okay, what is the realm of what I can do, given all that? And, uh, and that's kind of the purview. And so, you know, hey, am I, you know, where am I going towards? Am I going towards a situation, you know, ideally some going towards a situation where I'm doing less of the stuff I don't like and more of the stuff that I, that I do. I can see where, and I certainly, I probably experience, uh, I, I think about it as healthy anxiety, but I think that 
when you start to think about all those things, like, oh my gosh, can I still do this? Is there a chance that I could go back to school and how would I pay for that? And maybe I'm not going to like it, but I don't want to screw it up. But what are my parents going to think? What are my friends going to think if I change, if I shift and I keep doing this? And I bet that that causes a lot of people just to do nothing. Sure. And I, I mean, it's not, is it bad? Is that bad? <laughs> I mean, not, I not, to say not to do anything, but if you don't have conviction around the path or the next thing, you know, it can be a lot. So my hope for people is that they, that they aren't afraid to explore hmm. and that, uh, you know, and that's one of the things that I did that, you know, I, I worked at a job for 10, 11 years and then kind of left to do something completely different. And what was interesting or unique was that I, and I didn't quite appreciate it at the time, but now I do, I'm incredibly well qualified to go back. So I can, you know, I did that thing for 10 years. I can go back to that original job that I had and I'm, and people will hire me. I've got lots of experience. It's a new thing that I didn't really have under my belt. I, it, you know, it was again all new. I was not experienced in that. So, I, I think you know when you're thinking of a leap like that, hey, I'm going to school or I'm going to really change careers. Do it in a way that isn't necessarily, hey, I'm going to like have to mortgage my entire life to figure this out. Like, is there a way <laughs> where you can, you know, um, say you all of a sudden really like law and you want, you know, yes, you can go to law school and spend. Um, you know, tens or hundreds of thousand dollars to do that, um, depend, or you can, um, you know, get involved in law a little bit at the beginning, you know, validate that assumption that you really like it, work in a job that that doesn't require quite the same qualifications and just see if you like it. Um, and then, and then, you know, before sort of making this leap, especially, you know, especially if that leap is something that, that you just feel is going to be huge for, for you and your life and what you're doing. I love the idea in the practice of, of exploring, because how am I going to really know? If I'm going to like something until I actually do it. So yep. exploring those kinds of things. And, you know, I, I maybe it's just me. I, I don't know that I really knew myself necessarily when I was 15 years old or when I was 18 or 25 or even here at 45. Um, it's always we are changing and progressing. So probably a lot of value in conducting that exploratory sort of process just internally also say, okay, how is, how have my preferences changed? What am I willing to do? What am I not willing to do? What would I like to do more of? It, it's never ending. You're always, you're always doing that. You're, you're always iterating. You're always trying to figure it out. You're always, and, and I, the way I think about it is you're, you're learning about yourself through your job. In many ways, you're growing up through that. You're, you're, you're exercising skills. You're working with people. You're doing all these things that are showing you who you are as you mature and get older and uh and yeah it's hard you you, you probably ultimately yeah don't recognize yourself uh <laughs> when you when you think of the the young person in 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 school I, I i like that a lot we learn a lot through our jobs the work that we're doing um and it's probably really evidentiary that it'll show you okay you are really george having a hard time getting this done but you really fly through this kind of work and there's probably clues there Yep, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, uh, learning about yourself, um, one hundred percent. Um, and I think, again, that's the that's that's the experience. I think there's. I, I don't know if you've done this, but a lot of people sort of. Uh, I think when when you get into something, you think that you need to be really interested in the in, in the subject matter. So, say you're a, I don't know. Um, just there's a ladder thing behind me. You have to, you know, to get into a ladder business, you have to really like ladders. Well, no one really likes ladders. I don't know. I mean, maybe they do, but. Um, you know, it's very, very few in between getting into and working at a ladder company is a lot more about the skills that you have, the communication skills, the, um, you, you know, flexing some of the interpersonal, the, the, um, you know, the, 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 yeah, honestly, the soft skills that you have to within it, within a job. And, and that's a lot of what you are, I think, going to get out of it, or, or you're, you know, that's going to dictate a lot of your love or, or, <laughs> or or not of of a job and so you have to think that way when you approach a job and and the world of work is that it's it's open there are a lot of things out there and uh, just because you're not interested in something today doesn't mean you can't use a lot of the skills that you have i think what we like ultimately and what we're, we we like to be good at stuff like we <laughs> we don't want to start something and then feel like we're feel like we're getting better like we're going to get good would be ultimately become an expert and so, you know, finding something where that can be the case where you're, you know, you're learning, you're, 
you're getting a little bit better all the time, I think is important. Anyways, at least that's what I see talking to people. I couldn't agree more. I just couldn't agree more. I think that if we focus on, I'm going to find what I'm passionate about. Well, I hope that you do, but that's not probably going to happen immediately. You one day might be the most passionate ladder manufacturer slash salesperson in the world, but let's just focus on getting really good at understanding everything that goes into making a good ladder that people need. And I bet that you're going to become passionate about it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Give it it's fun when you do good stuff. Right. Yeah. That's, I mean, and if you're somebody who probably doesn't care about getting really good, well, you're probably not listening to this podcast anyway. <laughs> so from an entrepreneurial standpoint, um, I feel like entrepreneurship has been really glorified and romanticized in, in, in culture over the past, you know, recent, just recently. Do you think that that everybody's cut out to be an entrepreneur or maybe the better question is how do I find out if if maybe entrepreneurship is is right for me because to your point there's a lot going on you're wearing a lot of hats there's a lot of demands. Yeah, I mean, first-hand experience I I like I've got it. Um I uh you know, my 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 whole I have a bunch of people in with my family who have been entrepreneurs. I totally agree with you. It's been romanticized in in many ways. And I think part of that is just because you hear so much more about the success stories and that we really bury the the failures when they when they happen. And I, you know, I you know, failure is a broad term. I, I think it or can be used as a broad term in this case. I think going and doing thing isn't necessarily just because it fails as a business doesn't mean that it's wrong or bad or was or it was a mistake. But I do think that. If you have, it's kind of like with anything, it's kind of like if you have this itch to go and start a business at some point, like, you, I, and that was my case, like I, I just had to do it. It wasn't really a function of if it was a when situation. And that's why I took the plunge. But out there in the world, you do hear a lot of people tell you, if you listen, I think, you know, all the reasons why you shouldn't or all the challenges, all the hats you have to wear, all the, all the, like I was talking earlier about all the problems that come your way if you are an entrepreneur and you do you do start your own business. You do have, you know, there are a lot of things to think about and that can be an incredible time to learn because you get to learn all these things and it can also be just really challenging because it, it never ends. And so I, I don't know, I think there are also some very valid and it, it's also very nice in many ways to have a, a, a narrow, more narrow job, right? Where you are in charge of something within a big organization where you have you know, carte blanche or where you, you know, to do what you need to do, where you've got a steady paycheck. And the big thing too, for me was that when you want to leave, you can just leave a job. It's really not that hard. When you've started a business, it's not easy to just leave. It's yours. Um, you, you've got a lot of things to do to try to, uh, to, to take a vacation, to, uh, to try to exit the business, whatever you're trying to do. So um, I, I totally agree with you. It's been romanticized. I, at the same time, I think you can, you know, get involved in an entrepreneurial environment in a in, in a job with work with part whatever to help make it so that it isn't just all you if 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 that's part that uh, that's that's giving you anxiety but in the end I mean I I do think you can't you can't totally fight it if you really want to be an entrepreneur go you you should try it yeah hundred percent it is a great opportunity for the right person a terrible one for the wrong one but there's only one way to find out yeah so I like right. it. Well, Greg, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? Where can they find the Lifetime at Work podcast? Yeah, so you can go to lifetimeatwork.com. Um, it's also, you know, search Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever, wherever you listen. And yeah, every every episode is just me talking to a different guest and and getting into the details of their job with the goal of, you know, trying to glean advice and and just learn about what they're doing, what they're getting out of their job. And, and I think the goal is to make people understand more about themselves through their work. So um, that's what, uh, that's the goal of the podcast. So yeah, lifetime at work.com. I love it. I know that every time I listen, I sort of, you'll pick something out of any conversation that will inspire you or make you think about, well, I wonder what I would think about that. And just the more we can be thinking about these <laughs> things because we spend so much time at work. And I really hope that people, to your point, 65% of us don't like our jobs or we're disengaged at work. That's a that's a really crappy thing. So go to lifetimeatwork.com. Check out the Lifetime at Work podcast wherever you listen to your podcasts. And make sure that you're asking yourself those questions and figuring out that what you're figuring out if what you're doing is really what you want to be doing and how to make it a little bit better. Thanks again, Greg.
Thanks for having me. Until next time, remember, do your part by doing your best.